okay, uh, let's let's keep going down this article. Are you guys good, by the way? Is is everybody okay? Uh, I know this video is running kind of long, but I kind of knew that it would, and I'm okay with it because I haven't done a um, a video in a while, so I'm kind of having fun doing this with you guys. So I hope you guys are cool with continuing reading this thing. Um, if you gotta go, I totally get it. We're we're closing in in an hour and a half, and I really appreciate you guys fucking sticking around. <laughs> you guys are you guys are rock stars, man. <laughs> All right, to number three, uh, marketing matters. There's little to no difference between marketing and propaganda. I literally used to teach commercial propaganda to my high school students. Yes, thank you for saying this. Dude, I, I have a graphic design degree and I legitimately didn't want to join um, like bigger graphic design firms or, or apply to anything that says like marketing manager because I was like, this is all bullshit. Like when I was like 21, I like really, really hesitated to apply for jobs because I was like, this is all, this is, Marketing is taking psychology and finding out what your psychological weaknesses are and then playing up to it. That's all marketing ends up being. <laughs> They're just like, what are you scared of? We'll use that. Buy our, buy our soda or your children will become communists. And it's just like, whoa, shit, I don't want my kids to be, drink it, drink it, right? Like that's, that's how marketing works. <laughs> Hyperbole, I know, but that's also a marketing tool. <laughs> Okay, you can say that Republicans are propaganda masters all you want. It's marketing, and they're damned good at it. They are. Uh, so are the Democrats, though. Say what you want about the policies. Republicans have been uh, way the hell better at selling their policies, especially to rural America. Matthew Bates isn't wrong about why they have an advantage here. I'm not sure who Matthew Bates is. I'll have to look him up later. A win for them is to do nothing. Their whole shtick is to do absolutely nothing and to do a lot less of what you're already doing. And they've sold it incredibly well, whether it's catchy bits like Reagan's welfare queen or the line government is the problem. Republicans have been doing an excellent job of selling the idea that the government is not an instrument of the people for doing good for society. Yeah. They they've really fucking nailed that. And you know how they've nailed that? Uh, by making sure that their party is not an instrument for doing good for the people. <laughs> you have people like fucking Mitch McConnell that went against somebody in his own party, John McCain. I, I, he's kind of, I, he's not my favorite person, right? But John McCain did push back against Mitch McConnell when Mitch McConnell was making the argument that uh, corporate lobbyists and taking bribes should be legal for Congress. And John McCain was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and Mitch McConnell was like, I think it's a good idea. It's freedom. I think if it, it's free, like, if you want to see proof that the, that the Republican Party believes that the government is not the instrument uh, of the people for doing good for society, just look at what the Republicans believe in. and But that's dedication to the marketing. They've successfully gotten a significant chunk of people to believe that the Constitution doesn't actually say in multiple places that the purpose of the government and of taxation is for the general welfare or at minimum redefined what that means to rich people going to get rich and that's the way it should be. Uh, Madison and Alexander Hamilton advocated for this shit. Alexander Hamilton several times continues to try to advocate for a fucking king. The thing that the Revolutionary War fought against, he was like, yeah, we should do that again because people are dumb. And we have a fucking musical about him that no poor person can afford to go to. Anyway. Uh, They've sold a philosophy that what's good for the golden goose is good for you and the rest of you regular ganders and made people think that's morally correct. This is trickle down economics is what he's kind of describing here. Uh, they've mastered the oversimplification of complex issues for the, ac for the average person. Their actual mascot really should be uh, this guy. I'm not sure who this is. I mean, it's Matthew Broderick uh, in, a, in a thing. Does anybody know who this is? Does anybody 
know who Matthew Broderick is performing here? If you do, leave a comment. We'll come back to it. Because I don't think I've seen this movie. Uh, they're in incredibly effective at creating a problem, selling a solution, uh, which they can conveniently offer at a discount price, profiting widely from that solution, and leaving the whole thing in shambles behind them for someone else to clean up. Okay. Uh, and most of all, they're fantastic at convincing people that the alternative uh, to getting them screwed over by them is somehow worse. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, why, why do rural people eat this up? Because it seizes on something they feel pretty damn real to them. Government is constantly putting them uh, more, government is constantly putting more burdens on them and they don't feel like they're getting what they pay for. Democrats have done a bang up job of promoting mass transit and electric calls, cars and all sorts of things that they will never see. In, in the meantime, their hospitals are closing and their schools are shrinking and losing good teachers and buses uh, don't go past their place and their roads are falling to shit and their health insurance keeps going up. It sure seems like Democrats are helping the city people and not them. By the way, this exact problem exists in the rural communities in India as well, and I'm sure in virtually every country. Um, and Modi, another complicated figure, uh, as he his whole thing was trying to get rural people access to health care, access to electricity, access to the internet. The problem is Modi is a politician and executed plans to get rid of corruption and integrate rural people into more kind of urban um, necessities in the worst possible way because he's a politician and he fell into the trap of being a politician. Um, so if you drove uh, a Tesla out to my people, they'd laugh their asses off at you. It seems like a complete impractical car to them. It's too nice uh, to get it dirty and has way too many bells and whistles. Yes, I've met these people. Uh, and that's what they see AOC telling them to buy. Uh, liberals are goddamn horrible at marketing their policies to my people. But I have to say, uh, there's, there was a lot of people, including Elizabeth Warren, who came out and said that she's not trying to talk to these people. She is talking to the people that she knows is going to vote for them uh, or, or vote for her rather. And, um, you know, I think that's kind of a corporate democratic policy and it's a failing in the corporate democratic policies that they don't want to talk to the, the rural communities. Um, so I will say that, that their marketing is probably terrible because their marketing is not intended to be directed at the rural community. Um, they've kind of relegated they because they just don't think that the rural community is even going to vote for them. So why bother? Um, and in my opinion, I think that is kind of the wrong way to go about things. If you if, if that's you know that's that's kind of my opinion on it. I think that's kind of the wrong way to go about doing things. Now this is especially true in the era of Trump. Liberals is essentially uh, have been essentially running on a platform of well we're better than that shit filled dumpster fire, right? Uh, this isn't good enough. You want progress, you have to sell it to them. Uh, these policies are undeniably good for a lot of people who haven't bought into them. Universal health care would absolutely be good for a lot of people who aren't currently voting Democrats or on board with some of the more liberal policies. Many of them are paying out of control premiums and deductibles and are going into medical bankruptcy. By the way, America is, is I think, the only country right now with medical bankruptcy. Uh, rural hospitals are going under and cutting back essential services, all of which makes it much harder on these people. A universal health insurance system uh, that could ensure that rural people can still get adequate care at a lower cost uh, than they currently pay is undeniably good for them. I constantly see liberals who just wave this away. Um, they simply refuse to market anything because they think it's obvious or only an idiot would not understand that. Again, that just plays into the pretentiousness problem. No, that's not enough. Liberals have to sell it. And yeah, they have the extra advantage that they have to play to win when all the Republicans have to do is play not to lose. Ooh, that's a good important point. Doing something is a lot harder than doing nothing. And it's easier to scare people into sticking with a shitty thing they know than a scary thing they don't.
Uh, Republican policies right now are repacking their own warm piss <laughs> in unwashed bleach bottles with heavily with hastily uh, scrawled lemonade in Sharpie with a tape. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, this is a ridiculous sentence. And it's kind of hilarious. Let me restart it. Republican policies right now are repacking their own warm piss in unwashed bleach bottles with hastily scrawled lemonade in Sharpie. <laughs> on a tape, taped piece uh, of ripped off notebook paper. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that's a fucking spectacular goddamn sentence. And yeah, they have the extra advantage that they... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I we'll go back to reread that point. Uh, but seriously, if you can't beat that, then you've clearly... Uh, in need a better uh, of a better marketing firm. If you want to change that, you have to sell it. No, no, stop. I can hear you complain already. <laughs> oh man, I know, I know. We, we've been reading a lot. I want to read uh, one of the comments. Ah, oh, from Jay. Okay, uh, I want to push back a little against the idea that rural people don't know that stereotypes are wrong. I feel like in this day and age, people ought to have a baseline understanding that there are some things uh, that are demeaning and unacceptable to say. If for no other reason, uh, then they wouldn't want their shit said about them. Yeah, you can't tell me that you have a problem with how your rural communities are portrayed negatively in the media and then um, turn around and tell jokes about running Mexicans. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, Jay. I think that is an important, um, it's, it's part of that hypocrisy. And uh, I think that hypocrisy might be sold to them. So... Th that's one thing that the minority community and the rural community probably have in common is their representation in the media. And once we find that common ground together, we can move forward to have that conversation. So I think that might be the start of the conversation uh, when you have someone in the rural community making stereotypes like running, you know, running like a Mexican with the TV set um, and, and say, hey, do you want to be portrayed as a dumb, toothless hick. And then I think start the conversation from there. You'll probably get a little bit of pushback and defensiveness, but yeah, I think I agree, man. It, it, yeah, you, you should have a baseline understanding just because you don't want the stereotypes to be levied against you anyway. That's a very good point uh, to, to bring up. That hypocrisy, I think, is, is kind of sold uh, to a lot of us in this situation. Thanks for, thanks for putting that comment up, Jay. What's going on, everybody? If you enjoyed this video, there is more stuff like this coming on this channel, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon to make sure you're getting updates about my videos. Make sure you hit that like button, because uh, I think there's a dislike campaign happening on my channel. There's like one person that's just disliking all my shit. That's weird. Uh, but uh, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the share button. Get the word out about this channel. Uh, and there are going to be more videos like this. But if you enjoy this video and you want to be a part of the live comedy experience in this virtual world that we're living in now, uh, where, uh, where all the performance art is going virtual uh, for the time being, you can join my Zoom live stand-up comedy shows. It's called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Show. Uh, the first one is on May 8th, uh, and they will be consecutively every other week. All of the dates are available on my website right now, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Go grab your tickets right now. They're only five bucks. Five bucks gets you in, um, and it's five bucks per residence, not five bucks per person. Uh, it's just to grab you a spot. Uh, so go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Grab your ticket. Come hang out with me. Uh, if you can, you can become a sustaining member over on the website. Sustaining members get free tickets uh, to come see the Zoom virtual Citizen Revolution comedy show. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well. Uh, but all of this stuff helps keep me afloat, uh, keeps me uh, being able to put food on the table, uh, and cover all of my bills and expenses uh, to make sure that I'm putting out regular content. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Hope to see you again. Stay safe.